Hello and welcome to Lockdown Defenders. I'm Coach Mike, and today we're starting our post-defense series. Let's face it, you've been locking someone down on the perimeter, and now they want to take you into the post. And even if you don't have the size or strength, you still need to become a Lockdown Defender. Oh man, oh man, what a defensive player. In this defense. Wow. Oh. Now, when we talk about post-defense, we're not focused on the average big versus big matchup. No, we're focused on the mismatch, the player who is undersized but still understands he has a job to do. And before we go into any special techniques or tricks, we need to understand the basics, the importance of physicality, and the purpose of it. So let's start off with the jam. This is what I want. This is not dirty. This is called stopping the player from getting his post position. Beverly already getting in the jersey of Kevin Durant. Obviously, if someone wants to take you into the post, you have to make sure it's not easy to get there. And that's why Beverly jams Durant up as high as possible. Now, this does more than just annoy and frustrate your opponent. This makes it a battle to get to their spots, to get deep into the post. And most of the time, when faced with this battle, they'll end up catching it on the mid-range area. That goes back to the age-old saying, do your work early. Because if you're physical from the start and force them to catch it outside of the paint, now it becomes a face-up. And in a face-up, you can use your active hands, your on-ball pressure, and your lateral quickness to gain an advantage. It's the same mindset of a defensive back in football, jamming a wide receiver's path at the line of scrimmage, or even a lineman in football initiating contact. In fact, the best jam is an upward angle, standing your opponent upright and therefore making them less sturdy. Using that upward angle will give you the leverage and power you need to effectively jam. Of course, frustration is a part of the game, and when you initiate this much contact, there is bound to be some retaliation. This is a great chance to draw offensive fouls and possibly technicals if you remain composed. That's why physicality and jamming an opponent is so important. But now let's shift our focus to proper positioning. And in a mismatch situation, there's two basic fundamental positions. Three quarters denial and front. First, we'll discuss three quarters. This position is characterized by being on the high side of your opponent and straddling their inner leg, pushing him out to the baseline corner. This position does a great job at inviting passes to the outside hand where the opponent will have to meet the ball away from the paint. It's also very low risk if you play it right because on the flight of the ball, you can position yourself back in between the basket. In fact, some players go as far as to use a push out during the pass to the post. It's really as simple as it sounds. You push the post player out of the area as the post entry pass is occurring. If you haven't done this before, you'll be amazed at how effective it is. It's as simple as a forearm push, but it's so forceful because most offensive players stand up to receive or meet the pass. This puts them in a vulnerable position and gives you a brief moment of superior leverage. Lastly, let's talk about fronting the post. This is characterized by fighting for position between the ball and your man. In this position, you need to sit down low and drive your butt into your opponent's thigh. The more you can push your opponent back towards the basket, the smaller that window is for that lob or up and over pass. This is obviously a more aggressive position and is mainly used to prevent your opponent from catching the ball at all. To accomplish this successfully, you'll need the help of your teammates, the help from the backside. Make sure you're actively communicating with your teammates so that they're in position and aware to intercept any up and over lob passes.
These concepts are just the starting point to handling a post mismatch. Sometimes they'll be all you need, starting with a physical jam, sometimes as high as the three point line, to proper positioning and some secret physicality. You'll be on your way to locking down a post mismatch. And remember, if you can force their catch in the mid range or beyond, you'll be back to using your perimeter skills and the mismatch will be in your favor. More advanced post videos will be coming soon, but in the meantime, let me know about your own post secrets and tricks in the comments below. As always, I'm Coach Mike with Lockdown Defense. Keep up the hard work.